time for the visit with the person of high strangeness. Um, today we're going to have show number three in a series of seven about the trip that we took um, in search of the paranormal in, um, in the summer of 2003. Now, um, I'm going to make this very short. Um, I had last week we left off um, at Walls Drugs in South Dakota, and we're going to pick it up from there. And just to remind you, Najona is a Navajo word, and it means uh, beauty way. That's when a medicine man takes you on a journey. And so since it was the Navajo that named the RV, I'm going to take you for part number three of the Najona that we took. Uh, we're going to cover a lot of states and a lot of weather today. Um, uh, like I told you, we had ran into a lot of tornadoes. And as soon as we can queue up, uh, we can get going. We have a long ways to go today. Uh, we're going to go all the way to um, Texas, I believe. And so, so come right along and experience some of the things that we have in real time. That's our little, little fellow there. We need the audio. What well, a pretty bird. Yeah. Our car stopped uh, in Chamberlain. It just died. So we're going to go to a mechanic. And that's when we found this bird. It's actually two of them. I don't know what they call. Oh. They're so pretty. Also, the show, you'll notice we mm -hmm. kept getting to get delayed, which was a good thing, and it kept us out of a lot of disasters. Nobody did know what they called that bird, by the way. And off he goes. <laughs> Here we are in Chamberlain, South Dakota, and it's the Sunday. We were looking out the window, and there's soldiers putting up yellow ribbons all through town. Some more over there. It's pretty interesting. I wonder if this is like part of their civil duties or if, they, if this is paid time. I don't know. The girl talking, her name is Kate. We're stopped here because the car started backfiring again. But it seems like it's going to be okay. We've already gone 100 miles. And so maybe it just was hot. I don't know. It's pretty interesting, though. I haven't seen many soldiers on the road yet. Yeah, she worked... We're in um, Chamberlain, South Dakota. She worked the camera for me. About to cross the Missouri River. Uh, that's probably why those soldiers are walking around. It was actually Chamberlain that also got Wait, destroyed in a tornado a little later on. Beautiful. After we left there. So uh, come and experience this bridge with us in real yeah, time. Yeah, it's a pretty old bridge. See a speedboat out there having fun. They're playing around on this bridge all over the place. Yeah, I wonder what they are. We'll ask somebody. We're going to go back to the station where the where this baby quit, and we're gonna rest for a little while and try it again. That was just another detour. Nothing was wrong with our uh, rig at all. The problem is that we have to go over a bridge over the freeway. That's the Missouri River. Here's Al's oasis. Hello. A couple of small buffalo. Another one of the birds. Yeah, I'm gonna ask what they are. Oh man, I'm right in the. Here we are in uh, still in South Dakota, but as you can tell, the the uh, landscape has changed. It's gone to all farmland. We're about to enter Nebraska and Iowa, so kind of makes sense. We got 13 miles to Scotland. Yep, 13 miles to we're in Scotland. Amazing. <laughs> traveling all over. All the tornadoes hit in four states. There's a lot of death. But luckily enough, we were still in South Dakota, so we missed it. Um, they came right through the area that we're going to be in in Missouri. So, yeah, it was lucky. pretty incredible. I wonder what kind of crops they're growing here. Highway 37 going south. 
Yep. We're going to meet up with 50, head east, and then hit 29 and go south again. We're going to try to bypass Omaha. Omaha had gotten here. Like you wouldn't imagine it. We're getting down, we're going to cross the Missouri River and cross into Nebraska. Lots of trees down here by the river. The young man, that's Sean, the other camera person talking. Here comes the Missouri once again. This isn't the first time we've crossed it, it's the uh, third. <laughs> About the third time, About the yeah. third time we've crossed places. it. Oh, it'll actually be the fourth time. Ain't it funny how you can uh, from one state to the other, right on the border. Well, Everything the changes. Yeah. 50 mile hours, that's how fast we drove. Yep, we went over. That was a scary bridge, wasn't it? it? If it looks like I'm going to the right, I am. I had a I had a piece of wire wrapped around the steering big column. River. That's how I drove to Missouri. Thing must be a half mile wide. Nebraska. We are now in Nebraska. We are, yep. Now we are in Nebraska. We just crossed the state line. The good line. Yeah. Well, we'll Cross the border and we're back in the hill country again. Not my favorite. Sure looks good though. Yeah. But that's when you how it happens when you take if you have the US on a trip, you gotta go to back road so they can see something. Well here it is, sunny skies, rolling hills. So we're not going to Iowa at all, right? Yeah, actually we are going to Iowa. We're still going to Iowa? We're still going to Iowa. Cool. There's a bird up there, see it? Bago Indian Reservation in Nebraska. Well, right now we're in the town of Winnebago. Yeah, I can't the Indian. It's in Thurston County. <laughs> yeah, it's in Thurston County, wouldn't you know it? The first man we talked to at the house. service station was from Olympia. That's the hospital. Okay, 75. Yeah, left. Yeah, we're still on the Winnebago Reservation. Nice and hilly. We had a wonderful museum there, but we didn't have time to come. It's a creek. It's a creek. Tomato, tomato. Hey. Real pretty country around here. Yeah. Hey. Real pretty country around here. Yeah. That the surf. Lots it's of trees. Just be said twice. We only 100 Everything miles green. off again. Not a problem. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. And it looks like the uh, Lewis and Clark Clark Trail goes through here too. Looks so peaceful at well, that whoever's time. whoever's making the crop circles out here. It's a little late. Early. Here's a good place to do them. It's a little early in the year, but when them crops come up, come on out here and have a ball. Big open hills. I think we should play some flute music right about now. That would help me out a little bit too, and it sounds pretty on tape. This is the Omaha Reservation. And that, that passenger there is not a special effect. That's how it showed up on the camera. Just floating right along with us.
I think of farmland, I think of it as really flat. Yeah. But out here, the farmers have adapted to the hills. Sometimes you can see terraces. Lines right there, there's some terraces. You're watching uh, the visit with the personal five strangeness. Go on the back roads across country and seek in search actually of the paranormal. And unknown to us to be started heading in some pretty devastated area. We had gotten delayed in lots of places to get around tornadoes to remind you. There's a shadow of uh, 14 uh, tornadoes. Up on us. We thought that was pretty bizarre following our shadow. It's not a cropper anymore. It's a new one. Nah, it's Jonah. Yep. It's Navajo and it means Beauty way. That's right. Beauty way. It's when it takes you on a journey. Coming into Macy, the Omaha Nation. Very well kept reservations. People were great. Music you hear is from. From the Cheyenne State. Toward terraces. Giving us the music. And some silos. Now, these silos, unknown to us, had gotten all bent and damaged in the back. From a tornado that had came through the night before. It looked like Scott went right there. That's a beautiful drive. Yeah, we came through that just about fine. the area where the uh, tornadoes came through, and it's really wet. Yeah. All the fields are saturated. Yeah, up back there. That Devastated area there. So We're on our way to the town of Tecumseh. Probably gonna spend the night there. If we hadn't gotten delayed, we would have ended up there earlier. What a beautiful night it would be. This year, tornado had just came through. Yeah. Oh. We needed a place yeah, to pull yeah. over, and that's where we ended up at. There's a nice little train bridge right there. Beautiful day in Nebraska. We'll be crossing over into Iowa pretty soon. Yeah, again, everything is flooded. Yeah, back to we're in Iowa now. Last night we saw a bunch of lightning. There's a thunderstorm off Those are the, the fields. east. And here's the results. Fields are all flooded. We are not in Iowa. Yeah, this is here in Iowa. On the western border. I got so excited last night because I hadn't seen lightning in about a year. don't see any lightning up Washington, at least not on the west coast. Yeah. A lot of water sitting here. Yeah, but it came through here last night. <laughs> Got wet. Yeah, it's pretty scary just looking at it the next day. So this is a drive through Iowa on State Road 44. Lots of farms, 
Up and down. Northern Missouri on Route 136. Um, we're headed towards Princeton, where we're going to take um, Highway 65 down to Willow Springs. As you can tell, it's just a beautiful day out here. All the fields are green. Most of the crops haven't been put in yet, but that'll probably be happening soon. Up and down on these roads, it's so cool, it's like a roller coaster. It's just one after another. Yeah, except when you are the driver. <laughs> Yeah, I guess except when you're the driver. Think of things about him on the steering wheel. <laughs> <a high> speed. <laughs> but she's doing it well. Yeah. We're getting there, for sure. This is a lot nicer than taking the big highways because you get to see so much more. All the small farms and small towns and stuff. We spent last night in Marysville, Missouri. It was um, it's a nice town. But, and then we just went, we went past a monastery today, which was really interesting, in Conception Junction. Strange name for a monastery, huh? Yeah. Conception. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're in a place called Chillicock, oh, Missouri. We had to uh, get gas. We were just about out of gas, doing back roads because we trying to avoid, um, was trying to avoid the weather. This is a road that goes to Springfield, even though we're going to totally bypass it and try to make it a living on. Anyway, we got gas, and um, the Shona and uh, the RV, and the kids needed a little break. And so, right after we got the gas, there was uh, a, a play count. And so I told them they had 20 minutes to play. I'm going to walk around and see if I can find them. Um, there are birds up here. In the tree here. And squirrels and... I don't know where they are. Somewhere up in here. Oh, it's coming down. There it is. There it is. Sitting in the tree. Went from very cute. peaceful moments to Roadside Park. That's the first one we stopped at. We have been driving for weeks. Oh, here's some more little critters there. Just enjoying the summer, eating something. And so it's just nice to just goof off here for a minute. And just so you get an idea, um, the weather was <laughs> really bad. So the um, over here, the front, this part, that is the Cheyenne Reservation, hanging here. Then this mud here, that was from a place we stopped, and the truckers got stuck. So coming out, they were spinning wheels, and it goes all the way up here, the mud it flew, over, flew the top. over the top of us. And we've carried that with us a couple of hundred miles. And there's Sean. We brought that dirt all the way back to my Olympia. responsible camera person. Isn't it something? Here they come. Sean and Caitlin. Just playing. They've been locked up for weeks. Yep. So a man said to me the other day, where are your kids? I said, I don't know. <laughs> so they just all play in here. So that's what they do recreationally. We're going to lose um, Caitlin tomorrow, Caitlin tomorrow, because her parents are going to come pick her up, and then it'll just be Sean and myself going to the museum of the strange and unexplained. And that will be next week's show. It's going to be really exciting. So we're still trying to get there, and we missed all the storms so far. Here they come. Wow. <laughs> they just had a ball being cooped up all day. There's Sean.
I'm not sure what this contraption consists of. Between. I don't know what you're getting ready to do here. Between the wind and not being able to steer properly, I was pretty stressed yeah, out right about there. Like monkeys behind the bar. But the guys from Interstate, um, the repair shop in Interstate in Olympia, they were yeah, just great. They're doing they, some. Oh, I see how it works. They talked us to repairs. Works. They were great. Whoops. <laughs> That's how yeah. it works. Well, I feel kind of uh, bad that my trip was cut short. This um, is going to be, um, the audio on this is a little bad, but we'll try it. Go to the museum and stuff, but that didn't work out. So, um, I guess I'm, I'm a, a bit disappointed about that, but I also got to experience a lot of things on this trip. Um, probably my favorite uh, part was when we went to the Cheyenne Indian Reservation and just getting to meet um, Joe Little Coyote and just getting to like hear his, his point of view, just hearing a different culture's um, take on how the world is doing right now and how he feels so his community is doing um, spiritually and just the thing that he mentioned was that uh, people were always asking, you know, why they had all these dogs around and why the dogs were always mangy and seemed really thin and stuff. And he said that he took that as a, um, as, as a, like a representation, representation of, of his people and how when they were, when they were mangy and well in, in starving, that was kind of like his community. And when when the dogs turned to being healthy and just alive, that would also represent his community. And um, I don't know, it just seemed really real to me. Like I think that um, humans are very more similar to their environment than they would like to admit. And I don't know, that just really hit home. Um, I also really just liked talking to truckers, you know, and just like getting their their take on it and how they feel the same way about civilian cars that we, that civilian cars feel about truckers. And just like, I don't know, it's just everything is kind of like that in life. You know, you get, you feel like angry at someone or you feel um, disappointed in many ways. Maybe they could be the same way towards you. And if you, if you both maybe got together and discussed it, then, they, then the things would be clarified. So, so was it hard for you to be my co-driver here? Um, actually, I like I, I like being up in front more than I do in the back because I have a good sense of what's going on and I'm watching the towns come and I see what's going on, you know, how the weather is and how, you know how the, the road conditions and stuff like that. So I think that like it was easier on me being your co-captain than it was when I'm sitting across. I think every different type of weather known to man <laughs> on this trip. Oh, we didn't. Oh, yeah, we hit snow. We did it. Yeah, snow. it snowed. <laughs> and in rain Montana, and it snowed. It was really, really windy. But I think that's because uh, this trip was taken a month earlier than most of Lillian's trips begin. So um, that's probably to blame for that. Although we did, we did seem to miss all the uh, devastating weather, such as the tornadoes that hit Peck in Montana. Oh, no, in South Dakota and in um, Missouri. Nebraska, and South Kansas. Dakota, Kansas. Kansas, that entire area. We missed them just by our tardiness to be, you know, our, the fact that we were not, not in the places that we were supposed to be. Well, the places that we were supposed to be were hit with these things. Yeah. So it's kind of good, you know, in the long run. And uh, um, another point for me that was really amazing was how many people have stories um, to tell about uh, paranormal events, and just, uh, I had no idea, you know, I thought that, like, it was just maybe one in a hundred that had something to say about it, and the rest of them were in disbelief, but that's not, yeah, that's not, but that's not at all true, so, I don't know, I really, I, I thought this trip was really good for me, and I, I enjoyed
enjoyed most of it. Made the coffee cup, huh? Yeah, yeah. And um, I'm going to be excited to hear Lillian on her new radio show that's coming up pretty soon. So good luck on that, Lillian. Thank okay. you. I actually chose not to accept the offer for the radio show because it would have just taken away from this real busy schedule I have trying to share trips and conferences with you like we did throughout the year. Now, um, we did the very best with the audio on this tape um, uh, for you with Caitlin. That was her closing remarks. Now, the, the interview with Joe Little Coyote um, can be accessed on my webpage in in a transcript form, in its written form, if you would like to read that. He did not want to be on camera, but he had wonderful, wonderful things to say. So you can, um, you can access that at, um, at my webpage. Now, the next clip, as um, soon as we get going, we're going to take you into Missouri. You'll recognize familiar faces, Bob White, for instance. We spent a two, um, well, actually almost two days with Dr. Jordan and his wife. And so, and then of course, a lot of devastation, I told you earlier. So as soon as we get going with the clip, we will take you to some of the areas that really got hit and affected us very, very greatly. And um, so, enjoy. That's at Dr. Jordan's house. Um, this is owned by Dr. Jordan. It's a replica. One of his friends found the original down in Inca and uh, made uh, six replicas or so because at the time he was a uh, instrument maker. And Dr. Jordan's grandmother was the only person he ever knew that knew how to play it. Over here we have a replica of a German town. Looked so real. That was a great visit we had with Dr. Jordan and his wife in Willow Springs, Missouri. And you'll see more stories with Dr. Jordan uh, in some upcoming shows. Great interviews we have ahead for you. About earthquake prevention, um, his work at this Area is Southern Missouri, 51. On Highway 76, in between Willow Springs and Reed Springs. We just spent the night talking to Dr. Jordan. Now we're going to see the Museum of the Strange and Unexplained. Mr. Bob White and his uh, object that <coughs> is reportedly from a food fighter. We nice met a man war. that had a Bigfoot nice sighting war. that is documented right in that area. These are really warm. <laughs> it's kind of muggy out. Yeah, I'm still hanging a, a right. <laughs> they have a motorcycle, now you know where to go. Yeah. <laughs> Willow Springs, Missouri. Missouri. Yeah, Missouri. <laughs> countryside. It was in one of the closing shots. It's hilly, that's for sure. From the from the there museum. That's familiar to you. It's out in the Ozarks. Bob White was singing a song going down that highway. little item here. And uh, with Bob White. I did it. Mm-hmm. And the very interesting thing about the reason it's on the back of our rack card is because it never dawned on me. I mean, when we had this picture all this time, I didn't put it together. But when you read this 
about the crash that happened in Gerardo, Missouri, you'll see that the lady here said that her father, Hoffman, which is German, mm -hmm. gave this uh, little guy, or the pho photograph, to, to two guys, and they went off to Germany and never came back. Never heard from them again. The photograph was lost. The, uh, the alien was lost. Everything was lost. But we put it together and realized that this is German. Hmm. And there's the connection. This actually happened in Cape Girardeau. I see, I'm not familiar Missouri. with that at all. Uh, so that's the first time I've heard of this. Yeah, us too. And this, we had this for quite some time. This is and, the and museum of the unexplained. And then there's different versions of this in Wheat Springs, Missouri. Accessible no, to my webpage. Uh, on this, on this. Hey, what is he wearing? I'm so blind I can identify that. <laughs> well, you, there's been a lot of stories about this. Now, some people think that this is authentic. Mm -hmm. Some people think that it's a shaved <laughs> monkey. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. And some people think that it's uh, just uh, something that someone made. Mm -hmm. But this has been all over the world. Yeah, yeah. I'm filming his all different languages. Yeah. yeah. We got this. From uh, from uh, Japan, the uh, the uh, statues. The actual object. Uh -huh. yeah. Off the internet. Well, Missouri, yeah, it seems to be a hot spot. Now, I didn't know these things these things had happened until we opened this museum, mm -hmm. and people started bringing things into us and calling our attention to it. We met a really interesting woman that lives here. She said she's coming later. Her father was. Uh... We are in a little town called Aurora. We're still we dirty. thought this might have been Jim Master's Aurora, except it wasn't. So, we go down the street here. There's a sign here. The movie Matrix is real big. So Matrix 2 is premiering here in at midnight, which is four hours from now. That's a big event that So day. coincidentally, we wandered into this old building here. And we got a little story that I can tell you about, so I'm just going to take you inside. The restaurant is called the Bootleggers. And what a wonderful place it is to see entrance. And uh, anyway, there is a, it's like an old city desk here. We were told this used to be a bank. So I'm going to bring that in to you because there's people eating already. And it's just real, real long. As you can see on the menu, it's really, really reasonable. And what I found really interesting was the tabletop here. It's actually made out of receipts. I'm assuming that when they put a building here. What a cool idea. There is people eating in here, so we're not going to get them on camera for you. But here again, all the tabletops have receipts on them. And this here is a blue ball. Not sure what that entails. We had the attention of the owner a while ago, except uh, he got real busy all of a sudden. Now this is a picture of the original. Uh, he told us, let's see here, I think I'm too light. He, he, to he told us that it was a bank originally. Either this is the light or there's some activity going on here. Oh my. Yeah, there was a lot mm, of things. Hard to say. Yeah, yeah same with the camera. In most of the purposes here. And uh, there's, a hole, there's some holes in the wall. So the whole building. The reason for that, the holes in the wall of, will uh, become bricks, apparent. Old fashioned bricks. Now this is the ceiling shortly here. It is so impressive. It has been remodeled, so I'm going to bring that in for you. It is just awesome. And then up here, I'm assuming it's a banquet room. Um, I was told that people do live upstairs now. And at one time they had dentist offices and uh, in a barber shop upstairs. Huh. 
They actually have a payphone, one of the very, very few we've seen on this club. And then some of the decor, uh, decor is old newspaper clippings. Here's one now uh, from 1934. And this I was told, I think it's too light, hang on. Um, and this I was told was a hurricane, a hurricane that came through here. 450 people died. An inland hurricane. And here's a map of Missouri. I would almost assume that it was from a time gone by because I, can, I can't find out where we are on this map. Unfortunately, this is, believe it or not, by Ripley. Uh, it's a cartoon thing in a paper dated April 22nd, 1934. And this is the bar. Uh, sort of reminds me of Florence, Colorado, where this old bar was there, where of course we also had disturbances. That this food was so good. It went through here uh, in the 60s. Now here again, the light should be perfect, but it's not. So I cannot explain to you why I can't bring in the light in real time. Here we have a locomotive that is somewhat much better. This is the locomotive from the 1949. An Anheuser Busch sign. We had just discussed an Anheuser Busch in reference to something else. Last night we did. There are people eating up there too. It's just a wonderful place. It's called Bootlegger. Here's the ceiling again. It was very reasonable. Yeah. Bootlegger in Aurora, Missouri on Highway 60. And to make it real modern, first time we got to see CNN in over a month. There's a view from the upstairs. And notice the holes in the wall. At the time, it just made no sense why they would uh, have these holes There's in the, the wall. bank teller. And you go ten, mi ten miles, yeah, ten miles down the highway. Look. Here we are entering Pierce City. Right That's what the bridge, in holes the in the wall. I'm going to be quiet and. Uh, tornado hit a couple weeks ago. Yeah, last week. That was one of the last ones. That was the first week of May. That is Pierce City, Missouri. Yeah, President Bush was here yesterday, talking to the citizens. Oh my god, look at all that. Look at the trees over here. Look at that. Oh, jeez, they went all the way down there. Oh my god. Here's the filming. Oh my god. Oh my god. Down the main street. The cleanup has has begun here. Just to explain to you Excuse what me. what weather can do, so when they tell you to take cover and get out of your vehicle, I think that's a really, really good idea. Now, I'm going to uh, walk this way here and bring the town in for you as much as I can, what, what's left of it. Just went right down Main Street. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. These poor people, I can so relate with the earthquake. Just horrible. Just horrible. 
all you see now is people driving by and looking at the situation. That building did collapse right after we left. Looks like it went through there too. Another street, it must have had quite a, quite a whiff here. Oh my goodness. I guess I'm not a good reporter. I'm real emotional here. These poor people. My God. And it's right on our route. We're going right by it. Um, we just left, uh, uh, this morning we left Reedsville and uh, this is the road that we were designed to go. And so here again, had we been on schedule, we might have ended up here earlier. So, we have to really thank our creator for, and the show not to have sidetracked us for as long as they did. Now, some of you have seen that. It was on television, this is where President Bush was, and the cleanup has begun. So we would wish these people well and keep them in your thoughts. It's the inside of something. And it's yellow tagged. Oh my God. This is the armory. The whole town was in the armory. The preacher stepped out to do something and he got killed. So it was one in a break. Yeah, yeah. From the I whole town, to only one. I was just police officer here now. I'm still a little emotional from my own loss. So, but it's just, it's just unbelievable. The sheriff said um, this building is expected to fall down tonight because and it the structures are so weak. It's another block that's totally destroyed. And then here the cleanup has begun. Oh, some kind of way I have trouble tearing myself away from here. It was really most uh, This happened May 4th, 2003. And I guess the reason I'm having trouble tearing myself away from this is I want to impress on you again what Mother Nature can do. And just 10 miles up the highway, we told you they had a hurricane in 18 something. So it is just unbelievable. Yeah. There was oh, a Casey's substation. This is wrapped up on a pole here. And I'm going to swing over here and show you something. This is a car, a, a, a caboose, a train car. Now look up here in this tree, how it's just wrapped all through that tree. And then there's a railroad track right on the other side there. And uh, somebody's boat. And so when you tell people, you know, it's windy, it's just unbelievable. And then down the street here, we have, um, I would think these are FEMA staff members talking to the people. And we, we talked to some of the people, but we didn't want to intrude in their privacy because the trees are gone. And this is after a couple of weeks of cleanup. Just barely down the street from where all the destruction was. Here's the sun, with the sun going down. And up there somewhere is the moon, very pale, going up. I can't find the moon. The moon is coming up.
you know, um, we stopped there. There was Wagner, um, Missouri, and which was 10 miles away from Pier City. We stopped there. We taped the uh, eclipse for the, the whole two and a half hours. Um, we had put our cameras away. A wind came up, 70 mile an hour winds. Uh, unfortunately, we could not film this for you. But I had never seen water come straight down this way. And the wind picked it up in the parking lot and turned it into what looked like snow drifts. And um, so we, we had to wait there in the Walmart parking lot. The next morning, we drove 15 miles to half. Uh, we had found a Denny's. And um, now the next clip will show you what we encountered there. And um, it was just one disaster after another. We were so lucky to have been spared, you know, some of the things. So as soon as we get to the next clip, we'll take you to um, Muskegee. The very first the morning, wind blows, all within rain, 20 all miles. There were no warnings. Nothing was on the radar. Uh, it, it's probably float. <laughs> I wonder where we take the gate. The tires oh, got see my that. car, but gone too. So. I, I don't know. Yeah, we should have waited so long, then we could find out. But not now. <laughs> really? I think my trees are getting watered. We was in Wagner last night, and they had 70 mile an hour winds, and we couldn't get to the camera. Well, they had the sirens going off over there. Oh, they did? Yeah. Yeah, it was unbelievable. I, I have never seen nothing like that. So while we was eating, there were two tornadoes, yeah, we see we go on this one way. ahead of us and one to the right. It's just to show you the water, the cars are running in now. This is a really, really busy highway. So it would appear that people have parked and seek shelter because the highways are so, um, so flooded. Like the street is deserted all of a sudden. Here's a few, you can see the, the water there. It was the guy with the boat a few minutes ago. We, was, we talked about that. Yeah, just a very few cars out now. Yeah, they, they're having trouble. Look at that. Going through that intersection, it's all. People just took it up to real slow over here. Look at this. So it took three days to get 45 miles. Three days it took us. Total of three days. Yeah. One of the reasons they're driving like that, there's a lake over here. It's a total lake. Total lake. Unbelievable. But this is not what it was last night. Last night it just um, it just blew, and it looked like uh, like snowdrifts, like snowdrifts. I had never ever seen anything like that. So the scary times. Juanet X is doing its thing, I guess. So this footage was compressed in just a few minutes for you, but yeah. we were there a total of six hours I don't think I'm going to be my at Denny's. Border of the great state of Texas and Oklahoma. Yep. Look at that. Ain't that a welcome into the Lone Star State? Sean is from Texas, and he was going home for a few days. That's why he was so excited. And then I was see. by myself. By night alone. I'm in Texas as well, at a Walmart. A really weird wind is coming up. Really weird wind. And shortly Tell after the tornado hit. Now this, I'm going to let Bobby. you experience in Excellent. real time. I'm going to be quiet. I'm sorry. I'm far away. I'm 32 miles from Snyder and 84 miles from where I really want to go. 
So this wind came up and uh, hail. So I pulled in here and I waited a while. And then the weather got better. So I went six miles down the road and the wind came up again. And, and all the, there's a man moving some tree just fell or something. And um, so, so I was going to uh, keep going on the highway, but there's nothing there. And so I went to the sheriff's department, and he said, "Oh no, lady, you got 60 miles an hour wind. It's gonna blow you over. And this is in real time here. I'm gonna swing around here while I'm still standing." Oh yeah. We could hardly hold that camera. He said that they had they had a <laughs> two fire engine and a spare and uh Now please notice where I'm parked and we'll next week we'll pick up from that. So you can get a visual here. They don't use any more that's where they hide these. I hide the spare fire engine, but it's not used. And so there I am. So I guess fire engine has to go somewhere else. And it's actually sunshine to the land. There was just a forerunner. I'm going to get my little house in my makeshift car wash. And Relax. This is only the beginning, he said. Yeah. And it was. And it was the beginning, and we are at the end of the show. Now, next week, we're going to pick up right there uh, some of the experiences I had in that, yeah, in that car wash that, um, like I was telling you, that's where they kept one of the fire engines, and they thought I might be safe there and then we'll pick it up where we experience, uh, you know, some of the emotions I went to. Um, I hope you enjoyed this week's show. Um, it, it was just one disaster after another, but I thought I wanted to share it with you anyway. Um, and um, I, I want to tell you about the, um, I want to get back to that car wash there for a minute. When when I went to the sheriff's department, uh, where you saw the man that was hauling, actually was a prisoner that was hauling um, the debris away from there, and the, the sheriff said to me, you know, it hasn't rained here in almost uh, maybe half an inch in two years, and we really need some water. And I jokingly said, well, let me see what I can do about that, because uh, sometimes we do work on the weather. And um, so he said, you'll be safe there. Now, it was only a few steps from the sheriff's department to where I was parked. Um, I was so busy with the wind that I didn't notice that there was an opening in the back there. Um, and then in next week's show, it'll, it'll show you what I experienced. And unfortunately, I couldn't remember that there was an opening and that because of that, the wind had picked me up and kept throwing me around in there. And, and again, um, I was really grateful to my creator that he delayed us. Um, um, out through the clips, uh, I was having problems with the, with the RV, and there was really nothing wrong. But we missed all these disasters, um, and it saved our lives. Now, we were supposed to be in Reedsville on the 5th of May. Had we been on time, we would have been in Pierce City on the 4th of May um, when this horrible weather came. People was wonderful, and they were compassionate. Uh, we chose not to interview anyone that was hung up in that weather because we didn't want to intrude in their space. And so um, again, next week we'll kind of go on the lighter side again. And and I kind of hope that um, you, you enjoy this this new format we have and where we take you on a trip every um, every week uh, for seven weeks straight so you can go right along with us. Um, as soon as I'm done for the next clip, uh, we're going to see you next week where we will pick up in Roby, Texas, and we'll, we'll see you then. I hear music. I guess we're at the end. There we go. See you next week. Bye.